intermittent fasting has been one of the most popular dietary trends over the past few years. But what if I told you that one study found that skipping meals, especially skipping breakfast, was associated with increased mortality. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the study. But if you do want to slow down aging and live longer, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it. So the study was published actually in August 2022. Meal skipping and short-term meal intervals are associated with increased risk of all cause and cardiovascular disease mortality among US adults total of 24,000 adults over 40 years of age they participated in the national health and nutrition examination survey of the years 1999 to 2014 and a conclusion of the study was that eating one meal per day was associated with an increased risk of all cause and cardiovascular disease mortality skipping breakfast was associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality whereas skipping lunch and dinner was associated with increased risk of all-cause mortality. Among participants with three meals per day, a meal interval of less than 4.5 hours in two adjacent meals was associated with higher all-cause mortality. Now, first of all, this is an epidemiology study, which means that it's a food questionnaire-based study, and we're gonna pretty much unravel the underlying reason why there was associated increased risk of mortality in the people who skipped meals and did intermittent fasting. So as you can see, there are four columns here, meal frequency, one, two, three, and over four meals per day. There's actually the least participants in the one meal a day group, and that they were all pretty much the same age on average. So as you can see, actually the one meal a day had the lowest amount of calories on approximation, but uh, they actually have the hel unhealthiest healthy index score. So they have the lowest healthy eating index score, which means that they're eating the unhealthiest diet on average. And as you can see, the three meals a day group actually has the highest healthy eating index uh, score, which means that they have the healthiest diet, which makes sense a lot of days. And it kind of supports the healthy user bias. The people who are eating the three meals a day generally also follow a healthier lifestyle. They have a healthier diet overall, which of course contributes to the higher mortality risk in the one meal a day group. Snacks frequency is also the highest in the one meal a day group. So they weren't actually eating one meal a day. They were actually eating, they had 2.8 snacks per day on average so that's another uh, misleading uh, finding of this uh, study next up we have the gender so the one meal a day group has also the highest amount of males 55 percent and we know that males generally have shorter life expectancy than uh, women and the three meals a day has 45 percent uh, women so the lowest amount of males and the highest amount of women at least based on the epidemiology we know that women live longer than men disappointed Looking at race and ethnicity, then we can find that there's also very big discrepancies between the groups. So the one million day group has the least amount of uh, non-Hispanic whites and the highest amount of non-Hispanic uh, blacks. Unfortunately, there is a higher or shorter life expectancy among non-Hispanic blacks and uh, the whites generally have a higher life expectancy. Education, so the one meal a day group also had the worst education or the least amount of education, as you can see, less than high school diploma, 30% versus the three meals a day group at only 15% of less than high school diploma and college graduate or above 60% versus 41%. So again, we know that education is a protective factor against mortality and all different kinds of diseases. If you are higher educated, you tend to follow a healthier lifestyle, you have higher income, you have higher socioeconomic status and you just have better health as a result of that as well. So poverty is a, one of the biggest, let's say, risk factors for uh, dying of any cause, which means they have less access to healthcare, they have less access to good medical uh, procedures, etc., and they're less likely to follow the healthy lifestyle as well. Smoking status, so the one meal a day people smoked the most, <laughs> so the, uh, there was the least amount of never smokers in uh, the one meal a day group and the highest amount of never smokers in the three meals a day group. So almost half of the people who ate three meals a day have never smoked, whereas only 37% of the one meal a day group have never smoked, which means that up to 42% of them were current smokers versus 15%. So there's almost like three times more smokers in the one meal a day group than in the three meals a day group, which of course will explain the reason why they have higher mortality risk and higher cardiovascular disease mortality especially. Smoking is known to cut at least 10 years of your life, if not even more. If you get cancer and cardiovascular disease, both of them, then you can even cut like 20 years of your life. The one meal a day people were also the most frequent heavy drinkers and uh, they were the least amount of non-drinkers. Physical activity, another important factor measured by METS, so metabolic equivalents, the uh, one meal a day group had the highest amount of people in the least amount of physical activity. 
51 versus 41. And the highest activity group over 1200 minutes per week, 39% versus 44%, which means that the three meals a day group had higher physical activity compared to the one meal a day group. Food insecurity, so 18.2 versus 7.1%, which means that, yeah, the uh, one meal a day group had significantly higher food insecurity, which explains the poverty aspect, the lower socioeconomic status. So yeah, like the reason why they were eating one meal a day and probably the reason why they were you know, smoking more as well and uh, consuming more alcohol was because they didn't have actually food. It's a trap. So as you can see, this study has many holes in it and it's definitely not like honest in my opinion to uh, report that uh, skipping meals and I mean, it is honest by the sense that skipping meals is associated with increased mortality and increased cardiovascular disease mortality in this study because they just looked at those people who, uh, among the people who skipped meals, they had the worst eating habits. They had they were the higher, heaviest smokers, heaviest drinkers. They were the least physically active, and they were also the poorest, the lowest education. So I mean, it's yeah, like it's associated with the higher mortality but it's not that the skipping of the meal and skipping of the breakfast was that's what caused it it was mostly the other things that actually caused the mortality risk so it's very dishonest and disingenuous in my opinion to kind of make the conclusions that skipping meals is going to be bad for you when in reality the reason why those people in this study died was because the other things they were poorer they had less education they smoked they were less physically active and uh, they just had an unhealthy lifestyle there are actually numerous previous studies 2012 and 2013 2015 kind of linking together breakfast skipping with increased risk of diabetes but uh, if you look at all the like nuances of the studies then you can find that it's yeah like those people who skip meals they either overeat later in the day they smoke and uh, they also just follow unhealthier lifestyle habits or they just can't afford to eat that much which is the reason why they died i mean they don't die to poverty but poverty is what causes their let's say poorer health in a lot of ways so the point of this video is that uh, you don't have to necessarily fear that skipping meals is bad for you of course there's another story about muscle mass and muscle maintenance but it doesn't inherently increase your risk of mortality maybe in the elderly who are let's say 70 or 80 years old for them of course i wouldn't recommend eating one meal a day or two meals a day they need to be consuming more protein to maintain their body weight and uh, in the elderly people lower body weights is actually associated with mortality through sarcopenia and just malnutrition so the elderly certainly need to make sure that they do get adequate amounts of protein protein throughout the day and preferably in like three meals but someone who is in their 20s 40s even 50s probably has nothing to uh, worry about that but one of the easiest lowest hanging fruit for adding years to your life is making sure you don't get the chronic diseases such as diabetes obesity uh, kidney disease uh, heart disease alzheimer's those things and if fasting helps you to control your calorie intake and achieve that then it's not going to shorten your lifespan but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.